السلام علیکم و رحمت الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله طیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین جل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف In the last two sessions, we have been discussing resources that we have in Islam for inner peace. And we have already mentioned a few points. There are many points to mention, but I hope tonight I can at least mention two more points. One is that a mu'min should have good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this in itself brings lots of barakah. Uh, I first read for you some hadith and then inshallah I will try to analyze. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu By Allah that there is no God other than Him Ma u'tiya mu'minun qattu khayra dunya wal akhira illa bi husn dhannihi billah No mu'min has ever been given the good of dunya and akhira Except through husnu dhanna billah, means to have good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a very fundamental thing that you should always think that Allah is going to bring for you the best possible maslaha of you, the best possible interest of you. There's a hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. أحسن الظن بالله. Try to have good opinion about Allah سبحانه وتعالى. فإن الله عز وجل يقول. The Imam Raza alayhi salam quotes a hadith Qudsi. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in this divine saying hadith Qudsi. أنا عند ظن عبدي المؤمن. إن خيرا فخير وإن شرا فشر. I am very close to what my believing servant thinks about me. If he thinks good about me, if he thinks I'm going to help, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to be supportive, he will see it. If he says, you know, God is not going to forgive me, God is not to be kind with me, God is going, not going to help me with my children, I don't know, etc., then that can happen. There's no guarantee, but this is a factor because sometimes you have you know lots of factors and then there is a balance of all these factors but one of the factors in this universe is that if you are optimistic number one plus you have good opinion about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times you will get it but if you are pessimistic especially about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you will see what you think. Look at this also had this that explains you know why this is happening. So this is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. Allah Majlisi Razwanullah ta'ala alay in volume sixty one of Biharul Anwar. He quotes this hadith, page 366. Allah, uh, sorry, Alladhi la ilaha illahu la yahthunu dhannu abdin mu'minin billah illa kana allahu inda dhanna abdihi al-mu'min. No one's opinion about Allah will be good unless 
Allah will be close to his opinion. Why? لَأَنَّ اللَّهَ كَرِيمٌ Because Allah is Karim. Allah is very generous and very noble. بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرَاتِ And he has all the good things in his hand. يَسْتَحْيِي أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدُهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ قَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِهِ الظَّنِّ ثُمَّ يُخْلِفُ ظَنَّهُ وَالرَّجَاءَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels embarrassed. And you know, Allah doesn't have you know, embarrassment like us. But this is sifat fail Those who have studied aqaid, they know. Sometimes we have sifat azad, sometimes we have sifat fail sifat fail means something that is related to an action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An action has two sides. One is Allah, one is the, you know, the effect, the creature. And sometimes from this relation, you can understand things which have time, which have space, which have changes, although Allah doesn't have any of these things, yeah? So as a quality of essence, for example, his knowledge is eternal. But knowledge as a quality of action, we can say, now God knew that you have made this year. Or God, for example, today gave me a child, but God doesn't have time. God is eternal. So he's outside time framework or a space framework. But we can abstract these qualities of action, sefat will fail from relation between God and creatures. So Allah doesn't have any hesitation. But for example, there is a hadith that says, hadith Qudsi, I never have taraddud, hesitation, like when I, when I want to take the soul of a mu'min. Because this mu'min has worry and doesn't want to leave this. Dunya. <laughs> but the maslaha is that. So this taraddud is not like us. We have hesitation. We have, you know, concerns deep in our essence. But Allah in his essence is free from these problems. So this is a quality of action. So Rasulullah says, Allah has haya, feels embarrassed. That someone puts his hope and good opinion in him, and then he would disappoint. I had a lecture uh, recently for Imam Hassan's birthday, and I don't know if you saw about who is Karim. Who are the people who are Karim? And one of the things I mentioned was this, that Karim is someone that you don't need to take anything to him, you know? Someone who is Karim, if you go and visit a Karim person, a very generous person, he wouldn't say, what have you brought for me? If you have brought something good for me, I let you in. Otherwise, you know, go away. Na'uzubillah. Karim is not like this. Karim doesn't ask you what you have brought for me. Yeah? Karim says, what I can do for you? And Karim is extra kind you must uh, you know refer to your fit inshallah you are yourself karim so you can feel this at least go to your fitra or you know consider karim people in your mind do assimilation <laughs> and then you would understand when someone goes to karim and says i have come all the way to your home because of hope this is, you know, so much affecting Karim that feels that he owes you because he has gone to him with hope. Karim doesn't want to disappoint anyone. Okay? Another quality of Karim is that if you say, in the past you helped me, and now again I have come, again Karim feels this as extra, you know, reason. For example, if... Someone comes to you, you say, no, when I was an orphan, you helped me, I went to the school. And alhamdulillah, you know, I studied. Now I want to go to university. Karim prefers to help this person compared to someone that has no history. 
So having history with Karim makes you even better. Not that he says, OK, I've already helped you once. You know, that's enough for you. So this is why in du'a Abu Hamza, other du'as, you know, we say to Allah, you have done this for me from before my birth, in my childhood, in my adulthood. You have always helped me. So please help me with the current need. So if you go with hope to Karim, he would not disappoint. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Karim. He's Akramul Akramin. If you think positively about him, he is not going to disappoint you. Unless you have, you know, something which is not possible in mind, you know, or something which is, you know, not wise. Otherwise, he's not going to disappoint. So, always try to have good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes ulama mention these examples, you know, that how even thinking about negative things can have impact. And on the other hand, having good opinion can have impact. For example, they say, once Allah sent an angel to Pharaoh. Angels, you know, can take form of human beings and also, you know, sometimes birds, animals. They can take different forms, uh, except إِلَّا الْكَلْبِ khinzir. So they can take the form of any animal, sometimes take human being's form. Anyway, this angel appeared as a human being and said to Pharaoh, if you had a servant that you helped him with everything, you gave him you know, health, food, education, and then you gave him power, and he became like the king. But then, after all this help, he denies you and says, you know, Pharaoh has not done anything for me, and I am you know, myself you know, your lord, etc. What would you do with that person? Pharaoh said, I will make him drone in the sea. <laughs> so this way of thinking that can have impact. Or for example, Prophet Yusuf, Allah Nabi wa Ali wa salam. Okay? Maybe, I am not saying 100%, but maybe one reason he ended up with being in prison. What was it? He said, Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayya. He himself volunteered, you know. He said, prison is better than what these women ask me for. You know. So, he himself had in mind that prison is an option. So he said, I am happier to go to prison. If he didn't have this in his mind, maybe there was another way. Another solution. I'm not saying definite policy, but these are points that you know some scholars have said, and I think it's nice. So if you say I am going to be successful, inshallah, in my business, I'm going to be successful in my marriage, after of course other things being considered, not that you know you blindly go to something. But you do your rational checking everything, but then with hope, with good opinion, with energy, with optimism, you say Allah is going to help me. And tawakkul, which is my next point, then you will inshallah get it. Unless there is something which is impossible. It's, otherwise, Allah is not going to disappoint you. But if you are negative, if you say, you know, I'm sure I'm going to fail. Let me try, but I'm going to fail. Oh, you are going to fail. <laughs> You say, you know, my children are going to be bad. You know, in this age, I cannot have good children. If you think like this, then there is great chance that they become like that. So, with husnud dhanna billah, we will get extra support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, inshallah, listens to your plans for yourself and those who belong here. I, I have also... Uh, something to explain about how it works internally, but I don't have time, unfortunately. The next point that I want to mention is tawakkul. Tawakkul is also very important and very much connected, and it's a great tool. Most of us 
have not understood tawakkul. We think tawakkul is just a kind of maybe formality, you know, we say tawakkal to Allah. We say something, you know, just to maybe uh, observe, you know, some manners or etiquettes. But tawakkul is a great tool and asset. I mentioned two hadith. I hope, inshallah, I get a chance to continue this uh, discussion so that becomes complete, inshallah. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam said, At-tawakkulu ala Allah najatun min kulli su' wa hirzun min kulli aduf. If you put your trust in Allah, Allah really becomes your wakil. It's not formality, it's reality. If you believe that Allah is your wakil and you act as if Someone has, you know, if, if I, for example, have a legal issue and I employ the best solicitor, then I have peace of mind. Yeah? You are offered by Allah that I can be your vakil. And still we worry. We shouldn't worry. <laughs> we should have peace of mind. And he's so kind that he offers. He said, I am your vakil. This was Amir al Mu'minin. Another hadith from Amir al Mu'minin. Man tawakkala ala Allah zallat lahu as-sa'ab wa tasahhalat alayhi al-asbab. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, difficult things become easy for him or her. And causes and asbab become available. And above this, no hadith, we have Quran. Man yatawakkal ala Allah, fahuwa hasbuh. Inna Allah baliqu amrih, qad ja'ala Allah li kulli shayin qadra. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah is sufficient. But we need to put our heart into this tawakkul. We need to, you know, trust Allah really. You know, I many times say to people, look at tawakkul of Abdul Muttalib. When he said to Abraham, Ana rabbu al-ibl wa al-bayt rabbun. Why in the course of history many times Kaaba was destroyed? At that time Kaaba was not destroyed. But many times Kaaba by flood or you know by people burned Kaaba like Yazid. Why? Where was Rabbu al-ibl? Wa rabbu al-bayt? I say... Allah is Rabbul Bayt, but who is the patron, who is the guardian of the Bayt? If someone like Abdul Muttalib is looking after the house and puts his trust in Allah, Allah is going to protect. But if someone is saying, I am looking after this house, I am in charge, then I say, okay, go, go and you know, look after it. So we need tawakkul of Abdul Muttalib, not you know tawakkul of you know people who say something and they don't mean it. We pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept all your efforts and deeds in this holy month of Ramadan. Inshallah, we are going to have maybe one more day, Allah, But maybe this is the last chance I meet you. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for your du'as to be accepted. We ask Allah to remove all the obstacles between you and him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make, inshallah, us able and fortunate to go through lots of more months of Ramadan because we need every, you know, piece of months of Ramadan to add, inshallah, to our life, inshallah. May Allah give shifa to all people who are ill. And may Allah, inshallah, make marhumin of you, marhumin of this community and all marhumin in every part of the world. Inshallah, his guest right now, and inshallah, shower his mercy upon them. Amin, ya Rabbal Alam.